sneaky. We can't wait to take you through today's vinyasa flow class. So vinyasa is essentially a class where we're tying together these string of poses together. And this is wonderful because no two vinyasa classes will ever be the same. It's essentially a way to express creativity and you're just moving seamlessly from one pose to another. So for those of you new to the practice, you're more than welcome to join this class. However, it might also help perhaps to attend some of my Hatha classes because in Hatha, we hold the poses a little bit longer and we go through some of the alignment. So that's going to help you get a better understanding of some of the postures. But in any case, we hope you enjoy the practice. Let's come and meet on the mat. Allow yourself to arrive on your mat for your practice. Take a moment just to feel each breath as it comes in and each breath as it leaves the body. Hands to the center of heart. Take a moment to yourself to reflect on the intention that you wish to bring about to your practice today. Releasing the hands, let's come and meet on all fours and then take it back into a child's pose, everyone. Just sink the glutes back and take a moment to arrive. And then from here, make your way into an up dog, arching through the spine, maybe tucking the back toes and just shifting the hips from side to side and pushing back up to a downward facing dog. You can pedal out the feet if the hamstrings feel a little tight. Make sure your hands, your fingertips are spread wide open, index, middle finger pointing forwards. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Good. Coming up to high plank pose, stack your shoulders above the wrist, engage through the core. Breathing in here as you shift the gaze forwards. Hold for three, two, one. Take it into half chaturanga here. Bend the elbows if you need to drop the knees, do so. And then lower the belly on the chest. Lift your hands off the mat. Feel the inv invisible force between the palms of the hands and the floor. Tops of the thighs pressing down to the earth. And then reach your arms forwards. Can you lift the chest a little bit higher, everyone? One more deep breath. And place the hands down. Let's tuck our toes and slowly push back into child's pose. Breathing in and breathing out. Getting ready now to tuck the toes, make your way back into a downward facing dog. Inhale, coming up to plank pose, one straight line from head to toe. Let's try and lift the upper back portion of the chest and breathe. Bend the elbows for your half chaturanga, elbows close to the waistline. Let's hold everyone. And belly comes down to the mat. This time interlace the fingers behind your back. Lift the chest. Pull the fist away from your glutes and get this nice little arch of the spine. Hands come down to the mat. Let's tuck our toes. And from child's pose here, take a few deep breaths in and out through the nose. Let's meet back in your downward facing dog to start the main part of the practice. Deep breath in and deep breath out.
Right leg now goes up to the sky. Let's step the right foot forwards, lower the back knee, reach the arms back for Anjanayasana. Place the palms down, step the right foot back, lower through, vinyasa of your choice. Maybe take a knees gesture, everyone, upward facing dog, and then exhale, push back to your down dog. Left side, left foot forwards, lower the back knee, low lunge with your back bend. Palms touch down, step back to plank, vinyasa of your choice, upward facing dog, lift the chest to your downward facing dog. Right leg goes back up, let's step it forwards, this time rising up into a warrior one. Palms touch down, step it back to plank, vinyasa, urva mukha, breathe in, and downward facing dog. Left foot forwards, Virabhadrasana A, gazing up to the thumbs. Palms lower down, step back plank, Vinyasa. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a few breaths in here. If your heels don't reach the floor, that's okay. You can bend the knees and then slowly see if you can extend. Draw your heels together and point the toes out to 10 and 1 o'clock. Lift the right leg up to the sky. Point the toes. Option 1, stay here. Option 2, you're going to walk your left hand back to grab hold of the inside of the left heel. Breathing here and feel that beautiful stretch in your left hamstring. Left heel down to the earth, everyone. Now bend the right knee, option to just stay there, or grab hold of the top of the right foot. When you hold the foot, pull the knee so you're really opening up through the hip. Place the hand down, let's step the right foot forwards, lower the back knee. Hands on top of your right thigh, just take a few pulses here up and down into that right hip joint. Now reach for the back foot with your left hand and just draw the heel backwards and forwards as much as you can. Keep doing that. If quad is feeling quite open, then you can hold it down and release your right hand forwards, thumb and index finger connected. If that's easy, swap the hand position. Left hand reaches back this time. Very nice, everyone. Break the pose. From here, let's take it into extended side angle pose. Reach the top arm across and try and keep your right knee connected to your armpit. This will make it easier for you to go for a bind. Send the gaze up towards the ceiling or the sky and take a few breaths here. Release the hands down to the earth, lower the back knee and come into your half splits. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, fold the chest down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down. And let's hold here. Rebend into the right knee and let's make our way back Right leg up to the sky, maybe take your three-legged vinyasa, if not, just make your way down however feels good, and let's meet back in a downward facing dog or a child's pose. Depending on what the body needs, just make it your own. Always, always make it your own and listen to what you're feeling today. Let's tuck our toes and meet back in downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale. Heels together, toes out to the sides. Left leg reaches up to the sky, point the toes. Option one, stay as you are. Option two, come up onto the five fingertips of the right hand and see if you can slide the right hand back. Grab hold of the inside of the right heel. Make sure heel is connected to the earth. Bend the top knee. Option one, stay there. 
Option two, right hand now reaches for your left foot. Keep lifting the hip high, everyone, and breathe. Release the hand, step the left foot forwards, lower the back knee, palms on top of your left thigh, and just gently pulse up and down here as you ease your way into that hip stretch. Right hand reaches for the back foot. Make sure you're resting your weight on top of the flesh, just above the knee. Pull the foot backwards and forwards, thumb and index finger connecting to the front if you can. If it's easy, swap across. Left hand holds foot and right hand releases back now. Break the pose, left hand on the inside of the left foot. Coming up into extended side angle pose, reach the right arm forwards and then if you wish to take your bind, feel free to go ahead and grab hold of the fingertips, the wrist or the forearm. One more breath here. Lower the palms down, drop onto the back knee and extend your left leg. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold. And we hold now. Shift the weight forwards. Let's sweep that left leg up to the sky. Get ready for your three-legged vinyasa if possible. If not, just lower down however you can. And we will all meet back in down dog or child's pose. Breathe in and out through the nose now. And try and come back to that centered place. Lift yourself back up. We're coming into side plank. Right hand to the center of the mat. Option one, lower the right knee down. Option two, you, you may extend both legs, stacking one on top of the other. Option three, take Vashistasana, wrap your two piece fingers around the big toe and start to lengthen upwards and back at the same time. Breathing in here, whichever option you're taking, just lift the obliques and the hips higher. Lower the right leg down behind you and take it back into wild thing or if possible coming up into wheel pose. Lift your heart back up whichever option you're taking everyone. Let's return back into a high plank moving across to the other side. First taking an up dog and then back to your downward facing dog or child's pose. Come up to seated. Roll your hands around. Now place the backs of the palms down to the floor. Tuck the chin into the chest and just lean your weight forwards. You should start to feel a nice stretch in your forearms as well as the wrist. Really, really important to also look after the wrist joint, especially in arm balances and side plank postures. Across the other side, take your variation of side plank, left hand down, right arm up. Breathing in and breathing out. Drop the right leg behind you. Take it into wild thing or Urdhva Dhanurasana, wheel pose. If you're in your wheel, come up onto the tiptoes. Maybe walking your hands a little closer to the feet if you'd like. 
Very good, everyone. Flipping back over to a plank pose. Vinyasa of your choice. And then we're going to meet back in a downward facing dog. Calm the body by drawing in that breath very slowly and breathing out. Right foot outside of the right hand. We're going to meet in your lizard pose as you shift the weight backwards and forwards here. Lower the back knee down, untuck your toes, left hand out to the side as you spin onto the edge of the right foot and press up against your right inner thigh. Feeling this strong sensation of a glute stretch. Second option is to use your right hand to pull your left heel in towards the glute. Then you should start to incorporate a quad stretch as well. Palm back down. We're going to come into a twist here. So reaching your right arm up to the sky. If you're getting a little tired, you can always lower the back knee down. Transition now up into your high lunge twist as you reach the left arm back. And now plant both hands down to the floor. Let's step it back to plank, vinyasa. And let's meet back in our downward facing dog. Left foot outside of the left hand into lizard pose. Open the hips, shift the weight backwards and forwards. Release the back knee, spin onto the edge of the side foot and place your left hand on the inside of the thigh as you gaze backwards. Option one, stay here. Option two, you can bend your back knee and get that quad stretch as well. Breathing in and breathing out. Release the back leg, coming up into your close twist as you look up to your left hand. Remember you can lower the back knee if you want for the next few transitions. Let's rise up into a high lunge, reaching the arms back, gazing back and then taking it into a back bend for a breath. Lower the palms down, let's step it back straight into downward facing dog. Deep breath in and deep breath out. Coming forwards and backwards, we're going to transition to the back of the mat all the way. Two piece fingers around the big toe and fold into Paragushtasana, extended hand to foot pose. Bend and extend the legs if hamstrings are tight. If you're flexible, lift your hips higher and fold your chest down into the space between your thighs. Elbows coming out to the sides and breathe. Come up onto the fingertips now, slide the palms of the hands underneath the feet, Parahastasana. If this is too much, stay in the former pose. Flatten your chest as much as you can. Lengthen through your hamstrings. Onto your fingertips. Exhale, hands to the hips and let's rise up. Go wide onto your mat. We're coming into our side lunges now. Hands to the heart. Bending into your right knee. You're on the ball of your left foot. You can stay high, medium or low. If you come down, lower the glutes and then maybe start to take your bind. This is optional. You don't have to go there. You can even place the hands in front of you on the floor for balance if you need it. We'll just keep the hands to the heart. Now let's lift ourselves back up with or without the hands and shift to the other side. Make sure you're on the heel of the right foot now. 
and breathe here as you lengthen through your hamstrings. Good work, everyone. And let's lift back up very slowly with or without the hands. Coming back up to stand up tall. I'm going to move into your wide forward folds, Prasarita Parottanasana. Fold forwards, your hands can grab hold of the backs of your calves or the ankles. Pull the body weight forwards so your entire torso is directly underneath your sacrum here. Don't worry if the head doesn't reach the floor, just send the weight in that direction. Inhale up to fingertips, exhale to the hips and rise up. Palms behind your back, inhale and fold as you exhale. Pull the fist all the way down as far as you can reach. Open through the deltoids, the chest and the shoulders. Keep sending the weight out to the edges of both your feet. Inhale, come all the way back up. Step your feet together here. Bring your hands to the center of the chest. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale to the heart. Inhale, reaching the arms up. Exhale, we ground. Inhale, expand. Exhale to the heart. Ballet pose, left hand to left heel. Keep the knee bent. Maybe extend a little or go all the way. Find your balance here. External rotation of the left hip is required. You may use a strap if you would like. If you're having an easy time, you can start to send the gaze up. It is a hamstring stretch, so enjoy it. Very nice. Now come into your variation of tree pose. Foot can be high or low, but try and concentrate on keeping your left knee pointed outwards. Any arm variation, to grow into any kind of tree that you would like to embody today. Release the leg, shake your feet out a little bit, and let's move across to the other side. Right hand to the right heel, and go as far as it works for you today. Coming into your ballet pose, try and keep your standing legs straight and firm. Break the pose and slowly return into Vrikshasana, tree pose. Foot can be anywhere alongside the standing leg, except perhaps the kneecap, so you avoid pushing the patella out towards the side. And just stay here. Release the feet. Shake it out, do what you need to do. Inhale, reach the arms up, interlace the fingers, and now maybe rising up onto the balls of the feet as you lift your heels off. Let this be a beautiful side body stretch now. We're gonna to move to the left and the right side. Breathing in and breathing out. Hands to the heart, let's meet at the top of the mat. Inhale, circle the arms up. Exhale, fold forwards, Uttanasana. Inhale, lifting up halfway. Step or jump back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up dog. And back to your downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here, lengthen out the hamstrings, and then bend the knees, step or jump to seated. Extend both your legs forwards, reach the arms up, lengthen the spine, and then fold forwards wherever you come to. You may take your peace fingers around the big toe if you can reach the toes, and just fold your chest down to the tops of your thighs. Rising up here. 
Place your hands behind you. Let's come into reverse tabletop. Make sure your hips and the glutes are engaged. Looking up like a table. Distribute your weight evenly. Option to place your left ankle on top of your right thigh. Release. Right ankle on top of left thigh. If this is too hard, just stay in normal tabletop. That's perfect as it is. And come down gracefully. Navasana, boat pose. Extend or bend the legs, hands support or beside the knees. Breathing here. Chest coming forwards. Let's start to split the legs, one up, one down. Good, keep going in this way. Point the toes so you're active around the legs and you're using your hip flexors as well. Very good everyone, we're almost there. Great work. Peace fingers around the big toe, extend your legs, straighten the arms, straighten the legs, pull your chest towards your thighs. Sit up nice and tall and breathe. Very good. And come down, soles of the feet together. Let's fold into Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. Stretch your glutes, stretch the thighs. Breathing in and breathing out. Lifting up, stretch the legs forwards here. I'm going to take your left foot into your left arm and start to cradle the knee. You're opening up your left hip here. Hold for a few breaths, just enjoy the stretch. Sit up tall. Now bring your toe to your head a few times if you can in that direction. And let's start to make some phone calls. So drawing the left knee back past the armpit. Good. Take it all the way back and hold. Now we're coming into compass pose. You can use a strap if you need. Loop the strap around the foot. So your right hand is holding the strap. Place your left hand in front of your left thigh. Use your tricep to block the front of your thigh and then slowly extend upwards looking underneath the right armpit. If you can do this without the strap, you'd be holding on to your foot instead of the strap here. Most important is that your arm is blocking the thigh everyone. Break the pose, let's make our way into Janushirasasana. Fold forwards and get into your right hamstring. Keep your left knee bent and just fold. Rising up very slowly. Let's take a vinyasa of your choice and we'll meet back in a downward facing dog where you will step or jump back to a seated pose. Moving across to the other side, extend both your legs forwards, this time right hand cradling the knee, try and place the foot into the crease of the elbow, avoid hunching your lower back and sit up right here. Beautiful. Now bring the toe towards the direction of the forehead and make those phone calls. Opening up, think about oiling the joint of your right hip here. In, out, in, out. Preparing for your compass pose. Left hand holds the edge of the foot or strap around the foot. Right hand blocks the thigh, 
stretch the leg and start to look underneath the armpit here. So you're rotating that chest and it's such a nice side body stretch. Go as far as you can without injuring yourself. Use a strap if you need to. Place the foot into the crease of the thigh. Inhale, arms up and fold the chest forwards into Janashirasasana, head to knee pose. Lift yourself back up. Let's take a vinyasa, lowering down, up dog, downward facing dog. Lower down onto the knees, sit in hero pose. Lift your left arm up to the sky, right hand pulls the elbow down. Tricep stretch. Option to stay here, option to take the bind. Right hand reaches back and grabs hold of your fingers. If you can't reach, use a strap or hold on to a piece of clothing. Break the pose, roll the shoulders back and then pull your left arm across the chest stretching through your upper arm keep reaching the left arm right arm up come into the tricep stretch here option to stay as you are or work your way into a bind if you would like to go a little deeper Release your hands, roll the shoulders back, and now pull your right arm across the chest. Stretch through the right upper arm and breathe. Release the arms, coming onto all fours. Drop your left forearm on the mat and start to lift your right leg up. Option two, right hand grabs hold of the top of the foot, find it and pull it high. Option three, you can go a little bit deeper, take a strap, loop it around your foot, palm faces upwards, and then you're flipping the grip here as you start to draw your elbows forwards, come into a form of a bow pose on one side. This is quite deep, so just do as much as you can. Let's move across to the other side, right foot on down. Take any of the three versions that works for you. Option one, two, or three. If you're using the strap, just loop it around the foot. Left hand, palm facing upwards. Pull the elbow in, rotate, rotate, rotate forwards and hold here. And break the pose very slowly. Let's come and meet back, sitting back on our heels for a child's pose. A couple of breaths here. Lifting up, let's make our way back into Pigeon Pose. Left foot forwards, coming into your back bends. Right hand holds on to the foot, that's option one. Option two, you can place the foot into the crease of the elbow and reach for your fingertips. If you can't reach for them, use your strap and then work your way down the strap week on week. Another variation if you would like, Ekapada Rajakapotanasana, one-legged king pigeon. Right hand holds on to the strap or the foot. 
you can reach for the wrists, the fingers, the strap, depending on how open you feel your back is. Remember not to push it. Sometimes spine and shoulders are feeling a little tight, so just be mindful. Fold forwards into your pigeon pose and just rest your forehead down towards the mat here. Surrender the body. Let's transition to the other side. So come into your down dog. And then we're gonna bring the right foot forwards Come into, into your back bend, so make sure you sit on something to uh, equalize the hips on both sides. And then take your version of this back bend of choice. Maybe it's your mermaid pose. This is a good precursor to practicing before coming into that one-legged king pigeon pose, which is a deeper version. When you've had enough, just release the leg and then melt into your pigeon pose with the chest coming forwards. You can bring the right foot as far forwards as it allows. Lift yourself back up very gently. Sweep the leg forwards and let's come to lie on our backs. Make sure you have nothing behind you. Rock the knees from side to side. We're prepping to come into Halasana, plow pose now. Stretch your legs and with one big breath, roll backwards. Maybe the toes don't reach and that's fine. Keep your hands supporting the lower back. If the toes meet the floor, you can interlace your fingers and press down into the earth here. Stretch your hamstrings and breathe. Palms on the lower back. Let's take it up into shoulder stand, everyone. Feet together, point the toes up and gaze up towards your toes. Bend the knees slowly, place the hands down, Take it back into plow and then slowly uncurl the spine. Find your way, lying on the back. Supta Baddha Konasana. Feet together, knees out to the sides. Hands on the pelvis or reaching the arms back. Feel the grounding, earthly element that this pose can offer you now. Head, shoulders, glutes, heels, relax. Knees in together. Place the left knee on top of your right thigh. Weave your hands through and pull the thigh towards your chest. You should feel a similar sensation as you did in your pigeon pose. Now take it into eagle legs, bring the feet and the knee across to the right side, send the gaze across to your left side. You can cactus the arms or straighten the hands. Just take a moment here in this spinal twist.
Let's move across to the other side. Right ankle on top of left thigh and pull the left knee in towards the chest. Press the right leg over the left, maybe double binding or not. Bring the knees across to the left side as you gaze towards the right. You can use your left hand to anchor the thigh down and just rotate through your entire spine. Return back to center, hug the knees into the chest, opening the knees, circling them out towards the sides. Very good, everyone. And then slowly come to lie on your back, stretch your legs forwards, palms alongside the hips. We're moving into final relaxation here. Take a deep breath in and let it go. One more just like that. Breathe in and exhale. Start to move your fingers and the toes, the wrists and the ankles. Hug the knees into the chest and walk to the right side. Take a moment here before you start to lift your body back up to a comfortable seat. Take a moment to acknowledge how the body feels now and what the practice has offered. If there's any remaining tension left in the body, use your exhale breath to let it go. Hands to the heart. Dedicate the fruits of your practice to the well-being of all living beings. May our actions of body, speech and mind be motivated by kindness and compassion always. Thank you so much you guys for joining today's practice. If you've enjoyed the classes with me, make sure to sign up to my YouTube channel for weekly classes to your inbox. In the meantime, keep a happy mind and a happy heart. Namaste.